Orlando Brown is one of the most iconic actors to come from the 2000s Disney era, from voicing Fillmore in the cartoon Fillmore. You played me for a sucker, Penny. I'm not going out like that. Not for you. Not anymore. Be at HQ first thing in the morning. Don't make me come get you. And one last thing, baby. That chicken was dry. Real dry. To playing the iconic Eddie Thomas in That's a Raven, to voicing Sticky Webb in the original Proud Family, it's safe to say that this man is etched in many people's memories as an amazing actor and a gifted musician. However, Orlando has hit a rough spot for several years dealing with drug use, violations, mental health struggles, and running in and out of jail. And with all those struggles, he's actually not in the current reboot for The Proud Family, and he's also not in the current spinoff for Raven's Home. His characters Sticky and Eddie Thomas have been written off. However, despite all that, it seems that Orlando is doing much, much better today, and he's actually given his life to Christ and attributes his church, named Rise Church in Abilene, Texas, as his help in his recovery process. Mm. I didn't know what I was doing. I had an addiction to the internet, all kinds of stuff, you know, but um, my fiance told me about this place, and when I when I came, it was amazing. Yo, I had, I had a blast. His brothers accepted me for who I am, and... Um, Yo, man, I, I mean, I got a whole team of brothers now. Today, I really want to dive into Orlando's life, take a glance at his start, what made him so special, and the tragedies he's been through. However, I don't want people to solely focus on his struggles, but how he's been able to overcome. So this guy has quite the story, and I literally cannot wait to get into it. So hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Julia and I make videos on commentary and pop culture. And I also have a second channel where I speak on my faith as well as lifestyle videos. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link below to subscribe. Y'all, this, this video has been long overdue. I've had this video done and drafted since February. It's basically been in the bank and I never did it. <laughs> and I'm gonna be really honest and transparent as to why I never did it. So I actually did a poll on my community tab. You can follow my community tab for all kinds of updates from me. You know, I always post about like when I'm gonna be uploading, what's going on, all that stuff. So I posted Orlando Brown back in like around that time, maybe January, February, and he won 79% of the vote. But here's the thing, I've just kind of noticed just from my own like research analytics, all of that, I feel like if you're gonna do a poll, you want at least like 85 to 90% of the audience to agree because when it's 79%, that's almost a quarter of people that aren't interested. And I don't know, I just didn't wanna take the chance. It just didn't seem like y'all really cared that much. I was like, okay, maybe there's other topics that people are more interested in. Um, so that's kind of what I did. And then I did another poll a few months ago where I put him on a poll with Raven, Kylie and Victoria, and I am still gonna do the Raven and Kylie videos. Um, but I put him on that poll and he ranked the lowest on that, he was 10%. So I think it's just because I don't know, like out of all of those people, he isn't as relevant, but he's iconic in a way. And so I actually saw another content creator, his name is Patrick CC. He did a breakdown of Orlando Brown on his channel and it was really great. And that kind of gave me the push to do this video. So I think it was actually a good thing that I didn't do this video when I wanted to do it because Orlando actually went on the No Jumper podcast in April and did an interview. And he also did an interview with Tasha K and he's more active on social media. So there's just more to pull from in regards to him. So yeah, shout out to Patrick CC. His video was really good. Y'all should watch it. Without further ado, let's get into it. To be honest, I couldn't find that much about Orlando's early life or his parents, but Orlando was born on December 4th, 1987, and he got his first big break in the movie Major Pain. He also starred in the Jamie Foxx show and Family Matters, Max Keebler's Big Move, Two of a Kind with the Olsen twins. I used to watch that all the time on YouTube as a kid. I mean, I love the episodes with Orlando, bro. I like, yeah, he added the sauce to that show. Orlando was truly putting in work in the late 90s and early 2000s. I was also surprised to find out about this, but Orlando has actually always been pretty passionate about his faith in God. So here's a clip of him speaking on God, ego, and vanity in 2008. And does God carry you or, do you or does he walk with you? And how did it work in your situation as you were moving up in your career? He carried me and he carries me and he carries my family. Um, he carries my mind, he carries my heart, and if I had the heart of God, which we all need to do, um, is, is we need to sit down and try to figure out how we can have the heart of God. You feel what I mean? Because once you run with ego, then you have a problem. You can't run away from ego. You, you're stuck in an ego and you're stuck being vain and, and arrogant about everything you do. Orlando got another 
big break on the show That's So Raven. Orlando played Eddie Thomas, who we all knew to be athletic, on their school's basketball team and an aspiring rapper. He also sung the bridge in the That's So Raven theme song. Look, I don't care how many times I've seen this scene, okay? I still love this scene. One shot is all I really need to break it to your ankles and make you wiggle your knees. I'm guaranteed to make the nation wanna follow me. I got the ladies like, oh, child, I need to breathe now. Watch Eddie as I hold it steady. I'm undercover superstar, but y'all ain't ready. The game is full of gimmicks, so I'm about to make y'all feel me. Take a piece of me and keep it made a world be ready. Man. Orlando clearly had a hyper and vivacious personality from the start, so I'm actually going to play a few clips of Orlando behind the scenes on the set of That's So Raven. That's just, you know, the whole thing. You know, school is just there for you to, 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 to better you in life. But at the same time, it can be boring as hell. Now, this is the business. Y'all ready for this? My school room! This is my schoolroom. Am I, yes, am I a good student? Please tell them. I want you to tell the camera. Am I a good student, Mrs. Daphne? Am I? You have your moments. I have my moments. Now, now, what would you say that I do wrong the most? <laughs> your outburst. My outburst. <laughs> So after that So Raven ended, Orlando didn't really seem to ink any huge roles and his rap career never really took off. He did land a role in Straight Outta Compton in 2015, but other than that, he was pretty much off the radar during the latter half of the 2000s. So Orlando actually explained on the New Jumper podcast that after that So Raven, he was doing a lot of music and movies, trying to get into business. So I'll let you hear from him himself. Uh, from there, man, it was just just movies and, uh, you know, uh, music and uh, branching off to do, you know, my own thing, man. Um, it really was a blessing to be able to, to uh, you know, um, go through everything that I've gone through. And like I said, all of the sets that I've been on and everything like that, it just turns into you becoming your own CEO, you know, uh, your own boss, man. The cast of That's a Raven had a reunion back in 2015 on The View back when Raven was co-host of the show. So it was to many people's surprise when he started going downhill in 2016. I mean, I remember when that interview came out, I was so elated to see them all together on Elise, uh, Kyle, Orlando, and Raven together. It was really fun. Like, I remember being so excited. So when he started spiraling, or when we really saw that spiral, like, on display, it was wild. It seems as though Orlando Brown's downhill spiral began in 2011. He was arrested for a DUI in 2011 and failed to show the court that he completed his alcohol education classes. He was sentenced to 180 days in jail, but didn't serve the full sentence. He was also accused of threatening a woman on audio in 2014 and struck a plea deal with prosecutors, citing that it wasn't him in the audio. In 2016, his next offense was with his former girlfriend. He reportedly struck her and pulled her into a police parking lot where he was found with meth and other drug paraphernalia. Then Orlando failed to show up in court in regards to these charges and a warrant was issued for his arrest in 2018. And he faced additional charges due to a DV incident with his former girlfriend and girlfriend's mother. So there are several more charges that he incurred throughout 2018 for resisting arrest, drug use, and failing to cooperate with police. However, I'd be going on for several more minutes, so I want to get into a situation in 2018 that occurred at his best friend's restaurant. So Orlando broke into his best friend's restaurant, citing that he had permission to change the locks. He was caught on camera breaking and entering and eventually used a rag to cover the security camera. His best friend was a former death row artist named Danny Boy who claimed he never gave Orlando that permission. At this time, Orlando had just been released from a treatment facility and Orlando needed a place to stay, so Danny offered him his restaurant. I found this really weird because allowing someone to stay in your restaurant just seems like a huge liability. And I don't know, it's just weird. Like, I understand Danny Boy probably not feeling comfortable with Orlando staying in his house, but at least put him up in a hotel. Like, I don't know, put him up for a couple days, put him up for a couple weeks, like Airbnb something. It's just to have someone stay in a restaurant, like that's a huge liability, a huge red flag. So Orlando was also found in the closet of his friend's house during a police raid, citing a lawful arrest due to a warrant. So this was a huge thing. He was fighting, he was saying all these things. It was a crazy uh, scene. So that was also in the same year. Fucker, show me your hands. Show me your hands now, get out. Get out, get out. down now. Down now! Down now! Show me your ass! Put him behind your back now! You got a warrant for your arrest! Show me your hands! Orlando was also homeless, as then he was kicked out of his friend's house, and his friend threatened to beat him up if he didn't get away. So Cold blood! Go yeah. ahead, work for him on the corner. Sock me out! Sock this Look at this nigga, out. dirty ass feet. Yep, this sock bum me out. Ass nigga. 
try to get this nigga some love, he wants shit on you. Yeah. Now I know why he ain't got no family. What? Get the fuck away from here, nigga. I got God! You better get away from my house where you can knock the fuck out. <laughs> So this clip was really sad. I remember seeing this. And at this point, I just felt really bad for him. I, I mean, it was just sad because you could tell that uh, obviously Orlando really wasn't well. And it was just really tragic to see someone that I grew up watching like that. You know, the way people were making fun of him on social media, I was just like, y'all, y'all don't get it. You guys just do not get it. It was a really, really sad time, I think, for him. So next, I want to move on to all of his drama with Raven Simone. So Orlando has spoken on Raven dozens of times since 2016. It's been rumored that Orlando and Raven dated and Orlando revealed on the Vlad TV interview that him and Raven were in a relationship. I don't want to say the word, but him and Raven were in a relationship together and he revealed that they were very, you know, much, they're very close. Very, very close. I, I ate her pussy. Okay, that's what we had thought. People have been saying it and most of the people I had thought that's what the- I about. had the bu- 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 num cakes. <laughs> Do it and I can, um, uh, <laughs> oh, Imagine that as the <laughs> See, we're gonna take it to another level. Let's go. It's like this. He also spoke, this was really disturbing. This was really, really disturbing. He also spoke on how he and Raven were getting into it together when they were young, like when they were still teenagers and his mom just looked the other way. Oh no, but you know what's funny though? The kids, kids are disgusting. My mama caught her jacking me off and she walked out. She's like, that's Raven, it's okay. Yeah, that's true, that's real shit, that's real ah. shit. Again, if this is true and his mom literally ignored it and allowed them to continue, that's just messed up that her, apparently, allegedly, his mom walked in on him and Raven getting it in and just, ignored it. You could tell that even Orlando was disgusted by it when he was confronting his mom on the phone. So I will also play that clip here. So this clip I'm about to show y'all actually isn't about Orlando confronting his mom about Raven, but he's actually confronting his mom about just general trauma that he went through when he was growing up. You know, things concerning like things that he was exposed to that he shouldn't have been exposed to his mom's S orientation. I have to, again, be PC for YouTube. That's what this clip is about. When you told me, when I called you when I was seven and I said, Mama, are you gay? And I said, Mama, are you Mama, listen. I said, are you gay? And you said, no. And then I found out Auntie Pam was my auntie. She was your girlfriend. And I said, oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, and But I called you and you said, you were with my ass. Mama, listen to me. Because I remember this blatantly. Remember, I'm not trying to lie on you. I'm not trying to say nothing. No, no, no. Hear me. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Because I, I do remember this. Hold on. Mama, listen, hear me out, mom. No. Hear me out. Like, 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 I'm saying, I remember this. I remember going under your bed, and I remember looking at your diary. I remember, li hear me. Mama, hear me what I'm saying. This is the I got to go to. So many people believe this clip to be Raven's response to Orlando. Can't be 100% sure if Orlando is who she's talking about, but I'm still gonna play the clip here. A lot of people call it puppy love. And I think it depends on the humans. Yeah, there's some times where there is puppy love, but I truly didn't feel like my first relationship, even though it was at 13, but it lasted until we were in our 20s. And the, the romance stayed the whole time until stuff started getting twisted. Really? A very difficult relationship with someone close to me that I've actually ghosted, but that person still permeates my ether. Um, in a way informed through PTSD. And it feels like a loss. It feels like I've been abandoned. It feels like unloving. It feels very hard. Um, and you could say, you know, well, why don't you go find that in someone else? And you know, I've definitely done my fair share of searching for that type of person in my life, but it never fully is the same because I know the relationship that I'm missing can't be fulfilled by anybody else. So again, I think this is really disturbing if this is true. I mean, from my understanding, I mean, I was young for obviously when That's Raven was on, but I never got the impression that Orlando and Raven were really a couple in real life. As for like Raven's response, I definitely think that that's kind of 
odd that she would say that in front of her partner, in front of her wife. Like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just think that that's kind of... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's something there. There's someone that Raven is lamenting on. Again, if the whole thing with him and Raven getting into it on the set of That's a Raven, if that's really true, then it just kind of speaks volumes as to just how screwed up a lot of these child stars end up being you know because a lot of their parents will turn a blind eye because fame because of money because of accolades because they're living vicariously through their children and so for his mother to just allow some, again if it's true it's just horrible but if it's not true then it was all then it was annoying because orlando always had raven's name in his mouth over the past several years he's always spoke on raven so it was really annoying to me that he would always have raven in his mouth you know, I can understand that that was probably due to trauma, due to unresolved feelings, but it got on my nerves, to be quite honest with you, it got on my nerves. Um, but according to Orlando um, on the No Jumper podcast, he said that him and Raven are on good terms and that they've been speaking. So maybe one day they'll come and clear the air when Raven's ready. It's really crazy. I just think, bottom line, I think there was a lot of craziness that went on on That So Raven, that set. I think a lot of those kids went through a lot of things you know because each you know member i mean i don't know much about annalise but at least for the rest of them they all went through some kind of stuff whether it be like scrutiny online whether it be just doing dumb stuff it's just it just seems like they've all kind of gone through something so yeah so i couldn't really find anything about annalise but you know a lot of the kids on that set went through a lot i mean we have orlando obviously and then kyle massey you know he's going through that whole case with that underage girl um, he also dealt with Lil Twist, his brother and Lil Twist, I mean his brother, him and Lil Twist got into it. And then, uh, you know, Raven has just been through so many different things. And also I wanted to play a clip from the That's a Raven reunion where Raven alluded to stuff going on in that set between them. So it's kind of wild. So I'm gonna roll the clip here. Who dated the most cast and crew members? Uh-oh. I might go with Annalisa uh, Vanderpool on this. Sir, I, girl, who you date on the show? Oh. No, it was just we we all had a really nice relationship with each other. We're gonna keep it real simple. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's keep this going. I mean, I can't be the only one that's still shook that she actually said that, right? The fact that she outed them like that, right? Okay, cool. All right. But with all that being said, I want to get real quick into Orlando's turnaround where he seems to be doing much better today. Um, in October 21st, 2021, a clip of Orlando went viral and it was him rapping in a church singing about Jesus. And this was in his music video, Smiles on Me. Orlando claims to not be a Christian rapper. According to him, he's not a Christian rapper. That's not his thing. But I guess he does enjoy speaking on the Lord, which is great. You know that he found a place that really was able to embrace him and help him rehabilitate, help him recover from all the things he's gone through. But he claims to not have really been an addict like he like in his no jumper interview he claims to not have been an addict which is kind of wild considering like everything also i i forgot to mention his dr phil appearance so again it, it's kind of bizarre that he claims to have not have been an addict or what have you i didn't watch the entire no jumper interview but from what i saw orlando seemed to be in denial in some things he was speaking truth in some areas he seemed to be in denial in other areas I don't know, but at least he's doing much, much better than before. So I think that's something to celebrate. He's actually gotten on Instagram a few times to speak on Bible study, to speak on the Bible in general, his fiance and their daughter. And there's also a small clip of him speaking on his testimony. Mm, I didn't know what I was doing. I had an addiction to the internet, all kinds of stuff, you know, but um, my fiance told me about this place and when I when I came, it was amazing. Yo, I had I had a blast. These brothers accepted me for who I am. And um, yo, man, I, I mean, I got a whole team of brothers now. The geniuses in the Minutemen, um, and, and they're raising us all up in, in, in the way to be the same. You know what I mean? So all I can tell you is uh, I want to say thank you to all the leaders. I want to say thank you all for coming out. And uh, definitely donate. It's going to help the brothers. It's going to help the family. It's going to help the team. You know what I mean? And, uh, so yes, I think Orlando Brown's life and history is just a very crazy ride. Again, he claims to have never really been an addict, that he just dabbled. He also credits Dr. Phil because he said without Dr. Phil, he probably wouldn't have accepted the help. So I think it's good that now he recognizes that the path he was on was not a great path. 
recovery and, you know, really becoming a strong rehabilitated person, it takes time. It takes time to become completely 100%. And so, you know, I'm here for Orlando. I think at the end of the day, he's a good guy. I think he really has talent and I really hope the best for him and his life. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I created this outline in February, so I had to add a lot of inserts. I kind of felt a little disjointed while I was talking just because it wasn't like a current draft that I did yesterday, but I think it still turned out pretty good. I feel good. So again, all the best to Orlando Brown and I hope you guys hit the like button, also subscribe, and I'll see y'all in my next video.